May 4th, and we're pleased that you've joined us here in person or perhaps you're watching from home. Welcome. Uh, at this time, I'd like to invite Barnabas to start our meeting in prayer. Thank you, Miss Susan. Before I start in prayer, I just want to say one thing. I know it's the holiday season, and just know, I just want to say for us um, as residents to make sure we check on our neighbor. During this time, this is the time where, where the majority of our residents, so some of our residents, I say the majority, some of our residents are going through a tough time because it's Christmas coming up, it's November coming up, and so many people have lost loved ones, especially over the last couple of years. So check on your neighbor, see how they're doing, and show love and love your neighbor. And secondly, I want to say um, an attitude of gratitude goes a long way. So as you are experiencing these holiday seasons, understand it is a blessing to be here and sometimes we think about the negatives and see the negatives, but just challenge us to see the positives, even the small things, and know that God has given us so many blessings. We have so many things to be thankful for as well. All right, so let us pray this morning. Oh, heavenly gracious Father, I thank you for this morning and today, for it's truly a gift. You have given it to us, and we thank you. We um, praise you for every opportunity that we have to make it count. I pray for every resident that's watching on Channel 95, those that can't make it. Those that's here right now that's joining us, thank you for their attendance. Continue to bless them, give them health, joy, and prosperity in every area of their lives, Father. If there's anyone struggling today with any type of illness or hurt or pain, emotionally, physically, spiritually, I pray that you heal them and touch them in a supernatural way so that they can experience joy for today. Father, as we discuss the business of Edgewater, I pray that we do so in a loving and a caring way that we put our um, needs aside, but think about the needs of our community and others around us, and we do it in a way of love. Thank you for Miss Susan and her leadership. I pray you continue to empower her as she lead our community, and as she continue to lead countless others around her in her personal life as well. Give her the strength in every single way. So Lord, we thank you for all of our leaders and all of our employees here today. I pray, Father, that most importantly, that we're able to show love and kindness in every way to our neighbors and those we interact with day in and day out. Thank you for your faithfulness and your wonderful, glorious name. We pray this morning. Let all of you want to say amen. amen. Thank you. Okay, so we'll begin. I wanted to start off by uh, asking individuals to consider volunteering for the Cove. Um, we haven't opened the Cove yet, but we would like to do so, but we need to set up uh, specific times as well as volunteers. So if you are interested, please let Marty, myself, or Sheila Duchin know that you'd like to volunteer, and then we'll come up with a schedule. Yes, Bob. We have not purchased the supplies yet, but we have to get the volunteers. The supplies should be quick to come in, so I'm not as concerned about the supplies. I know Sheila would like to send out a survey to see what kinds of items you'd like in the Cove, and so that survey should be, um, she'll be sending that out to you as well. Thank you. Okay, um, Medicare cards, some of you may have been a victim to a recent Medicare breach and may be receiving new Medicare cards with a different number. Not everyone is a victim of the Medicare breach, but some of you may be receiving new Medicare cards. Um, it's really imperative that we receive a copy of that because if we have the wrong Medicare card, if you should sign up for therapy or sign up or go into Willowbrook Court and we need to bill Medicare, we need to have the right information on file. So if any of you are receiving or have received new Medicare cards, please make a copy, bring it to the wellness clinic so that we can um, add it to the record. Roz, do you have any comments? Okay. and. Right, so some of you probably were in a data breach, and so Medicare is being careful and reissuing new Medicare cards. Not everyone, but some Medicare recipients. So speaking of the wellness clinic, I just want to emphasize that we really want you to um, to participate in the annual wellness visit. It's really important that our medical records be up to date. 
Um, when an emergency rises, we provide paramedics with basic information, including medications, allergies, who your physician is, who, um, who your um, POA is, and some of this information is critical during that time. Um, we recently had a resident who fell and unfortunately, we had no medications. We didn't know if the person was on blood thinners. Uh, the person um, may have hit their head. So it's really important that we have that information. We're not trying to be nosy. We're not trying to take over <laughs> your medical life. Um, we understand some of you use outside providers, which is great. And we respect that. We just need to have an annual visit so that the likelihood of most of your information being up to date would be up to date. In addition, if you change medications, you could simply give us a call and we can adjust your medication list. Any questions related to that? Judy? That's at the wellness clinic. Okay, um, COVID testing and the wellness clinic, as well as dressing changes, I'd like to share that there is a change in COVID testing. Uh, there will be a letter that will stuff the mailboxes, but if a resident has the clinic test for COVID, there will be a charge. Now, the charge is based on um, it will either be $25 or $30 because some of the um, tests we actually purchase, meaning ACTS, and other tests were provided by the federal government. So there is an administrative charge. We will provide you, however, the test at no cost. So if you want to test yourself, we'll give you the test. You can test yourself and then let us know if you're positive. Um, but those, those tests do come at a cost, and that is a new change. And just wanted to make sure everyone knew we will be sending a letter also out in your mailboxes. Herb? Medicare does not pay for COVID tests. No, you're thinking of the vaccination. Yeah. This is a test. So you you have a you have cold-like symptoms. You want to confirm that you do or don't have COVID. We can test you, but we'll charge you in the future, or we can provide you with the test and you do it at home for free. Melissa. Right, so we're, you're paying for the service. If you do it for yourself, we're not going to charge, okay? And some, and they're really, you know, once you do it one time, they're pretty easy to do, and you just read the directions very closely and follow the the num, how many seconds to swab the nose, how many minutes that the the sample needs to be read for, and it's pretty simple and straightforward. Also, we do um, provide dressing changes in the clinic, and there are charges for that. That is spelled out on the ancillary charge list that you receive at the beginning of each year, uh, but just wanted to remind you of that. Okay, so speaking of money, um, we have a budget meeting today, and consistent with ACT's practice of prior years, ACT invites one representative um, from each community to participate in a portion of the ACTS Board of Directors meeting. It's actually scheduled today, and Myra Savage, Resident Association President, will be attending along with myself at the Southeast Regional Office. In November, uh, we have a quarterly town hall meeting, which will be held to review the details of the 2025 budget as well as the resident fee increase. Now for newer residents, a letter always comes out 60 days prior to any fee increases. So by November 1st, you will have a letter in your box um, outlining the increase in the monthly service fee for next year. 
Any questions about that? And the, um, the, the practice is also consistent with the new Florida statute that requires all CCRC campuses to have a representative at the annual budget meeting. So did you know that when you um, sign up on the EATS app for reservations, you can now add that reservation to your electronic calendar? I know Darren had sent this out um, on the forum, but when you go to the EATS app and you do your reservation for dining, you can also just click on Apple, Google, or Outlook calendars. So if you use your calendars on your phone, you can also use this feature and then that reservation will go into your calendar to make it easier for you to, to track your reservations. Any questions on that? Okay, and I'm really um, excited to announce that we have a new campus. I believe a letter went out um, regarding the terraces at Bonita Springs. Um, we have added uh, this campus, and it is located in Bonita Springs, Florida. They will be joining the Axe family November 1st. They will not be part of the obligated group. They will be an affiliate, and we do that to protect the obligated group until that affiliate proves financial um, stability, and at which time then that uh, affiliate would come into the obligated group. Uh, so Bonita Springs, um, the terraces at Bonita Springs, has about 245 residents. They offer independent living, assisted living, and skilled nursing care. These are some pictures. That's a picture of one of their apartments. That's the outside of Bonita Springs. They have an indoor pool, I'm jealous. They have tennis courts. Any questions about the terraces? Yes, Sally? Are the, are the Mesa units that we added in Dunedin now obligated? or are they, they are not. So it takes several years uh, oh. before you become part of the obligated group. So the Mesa Life community is still an affiliate. So they stand on their own financials. Um, the obligated group, we're part of the obligated group. And we, among the other communities, we share in the risks um, associated with any, you know, any issues, um, whether economic issues or uh, if one campus is struggling with occupancy and another one's doing well, we end up being strong because of that. So we are part of the obligated group. Jane? Thank you. How old is the community? It was um, built in 2013, so it's relatively young. And if anyone remembers Michelle Wasserloff, I don't know if anyone remembers that name. She was here as the administrator many moons ago. She also served as executive director at St. Andrews Estates. She served at, uh, in regional capacity with ACTS. She worked for ACTS for many years. She left the organization, moved to the West Coast. She's actually the executive director at Bonita Springs. So she's very familiar with the culture of ACTS and is very excited to be back um, with the ACTS family. So if you remember Michelle, um, you'll, you'll um, know that she's gonna, we're in good hands with her um, as the ED there. So we had service awards scheduled on September 25th, but we had that Hurricane Helene, um, who threatened us, and Helene's hiding her face over in the corner, um, but Hurricane Helene, we had tropical storm warnings that evening, although we saw no storms. Uh, we opted to cancel uh, the event because we knew that employees would be 
dressed to the nines, and they would come only to arrive perhaps soaked for their dinner. So we opted to reschedule the service awards. We've rescheduled those awards for November 13th, and we look forward to honoring team members celebrating milestone anniversaries such as 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and yes, 40 years of service. And so to share that, um, here's the listing of five-year celebrations, 10-year celebrations, and you'll note that there's a lot of Willowbrook Court, Culinary, Environmental Service, and Regional, as well as Home Health um, Services um, employees. So we actually host the regional office and home health at our annual celebration. And then we have 15 to 35 years on the left. And you'll notice on the right, we have one um, 40th year anniversary, and that's Gwen Norton. She works in Oak Bridge Terrace, and she's been here for 40 years. She's our longest tenured employee here at Edgewater. So when you run into her, uh, please congratulate her. So I wanted to spend a couple minutes um, thanking individuals. Uh, we had our Jewish holidays, and I want to thank Darren and the culinary team for such special holiday meals. Also, thank you to Diane Hoflick and her committee for planning the wonderful services and the meals that we um, had during the Jewish holidays. We also had the World Mental Health Day on October 15th. I actually missed it, which I was sorry that I wasn't able to attend, but I want to uh, thank Mary Lou and Jane um, Barnabas, Dr. Lacadera, Tony, our fitness director, and Delia from sales and marketing for providing such a needed uh, focus on the importance of mental health and how we can achieve wellness. I know it was well attended. 52 people attended, and I, I think everyone came away with um, nuggets on how to improve their wellness, especially their mental health. What, what is hanging in there? Okay, if you go to the art way, um, uh, you can go, well, yeah. In order to get downstairs, you have to go through the art way. So stop and see what mental health means to the individuals who participated on that very special day. Okay, we also had Active Aging Week um, on October 14th through the 18th. We offered Thrive screenings. We had bistro, chair volleyball. We had a drum class, which was really fun, uh, beach walk, and croquet games, thanks to Tony, our fitness director. And I hope that for those of you who enjoyed uh, those games that we'll do it again and we'll hopefully expand on our fitness and wellness opportunities. I also want to give a shout out to Helene Greenberg. Um, as you'll recall, Stephanie Weiss, our Director of Fitness and Rehabilitation Services, lost her husband um, on September 12th, Kevin. Um, and Stephanie, along with two of her daughters, work here at Edgewater. Uh, Kevin's sudden departure has obviously left a void that will um, be de deeply felt by all who knew him. But Helene Greenberg uh, raised funds for the Knowledge Pathway Garden, and we will have a brick in memory of Kevin. And when Stephanie comes back from her leave of absence, we will certainly offer to have a special um, private um, gathering um, to, um, to remember Kevin and to also honor him. Thank you, Helene. And then, uh, of course, we had the Halloween party last weekend on, the, on Saturday, and I wanted to share all the fun with you.
the volume is not working. Let's see. If we could stop for a minute. Let me just see what we're doing. Is DeAndre back there? Is he back there, Ellen? Okay, let's see. Okay, let's see if this will work. Well, we had the monster mash <laughs> playing in the background. So I, it truly really was a monster mash, um, a fun event. And here are some uh, photos and videos from the event. Hundred and seventy six people attended dinner and then we had a lot of people come upstairs. Thank you. We'll also add this to um, in house TV if anyone would like to see it. There's Helene. <laughs> Taylor Swift, I understand, was here. <laughs> and Travis, of course. <laughs> A lot of dancing and um, entertainment. And the Invisible Man was also there. <laughs> It's a lot more fun with the music. I'm sorry that technology is not working for us. Mary Lou. That was Darren. So I wanted to uh, thank Muriel and her social committee, Mary Lou, Kathy, Celia, Ellen, Darren, and the entire culinary team. I think we, you would agree we had a spooking good time. <laughs> and thanks for the memories. Okay, so uh, speaking of memories, we asked all of you to participate in the resident engagement survey, and we even bribed you a bit, asking you to come for Sundays or a hot dog, uh, because we needed to get your feedback, and we had about 55%. Our goal was 70%. So um, sometimes the numbers, the lower they are, they're not as accurate. So. We're hoping they will be accurate, but we appreciate those who did um, participate. 
we did say that we would do um, have some raffles for those of you who participated either electronically or you came down and filled out the forms. And um, most of you, I'm assuming, filled out a card. Anyone did, who is in the room who did not fill out a card but participated? Okay, so we've got cards in the back. So Marty's going to add Sally and Helene to two of them and Jane. And then we will add their names in there. And we have a, a few gifts. So we want to raffle and Mickey. So we got four people. And we'll add you to the, the bag here and we'll raffle off um, some prizes. It's for anyone who completed the survey. We added you to the name to the list if you told us you completed it, or if you came and filled it out, we added you. Electronically, you would have had to tell us because we don't. Those are all confidential. Uh, can we add the Evans and Roz? So we asked you to come down and let us know you filled it out, and we would have added you to the, the list, or to the raffle. Josiane, do you have anything? Do you have anything? You want anything? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so let me shake this up. And we have nine tickets to the Township Center. If you already have Township tickets, see me afterwards and we'll give you a different raffle. But um, what we'll do for the nine is we'll call your names and then afterwards, if you'll come up and choose one ticket, you'll get a free bus um, ride as well as a ticket. But if you already are members with that um, event, let me know and we'll find you a different gift. Okay, so for the nine township center tickets, we have Gwen Cohen, uh, Yolanda DeHart, Kathy Fagan, we have Les. There's only one less in the room in the building. That's four. The fifth one is uh, um, Melvin Schoen, Risa Sands, Eileen Kreskus. Eighth one is Kalish, so either Mark or his wife. And then the last one is Larry Hunter. So those are for the towns, um, Township Center tickets. All right, and then we have a day at the spa. So this will be our spa here. You can go get a pedicure, manicure, and hairstyle. And that is Joyce. Uh, back rock and then we have one free housekeeping cleaning Ralph Levin Levin and then the final uh, raffle dinner for 10 in the harvest room and that's a duplication we got someone's name in there twice I cannot read this. B520. Joyce. Joyce Fishman. Fishman. Okay, thank you. So Joyce wins the dinner for 10 in the harvest room, and she'll see Darren to come up with a nice menu and invite nine other people to the event. Again, thank you for participating. We do appreciate your feedback, and at a later date, we will um, provide you with a summary of uh, the, the positives as well as some of the constructive um, suggestions that are in the survey. 
and we appreciate learning from you, um, your opinions. So thank you very much. Wanted to uh, just let everyone know that on November 11th, there'll be a special Veterans Day program in this room, thanks to Bob Taylor and his committee. And following the Veterans Day service, we will ask you to join us for a picnic-type lunch downstairs. That's November 11th. As a reminder, um, bingo is changing from Saturday evenings to every Monday night. Susan Davis and Jean Elks will be overseeing bingo, but I want to give um, a special thank you to Buddy Harris for overseeing bingo all these years, and he has uh, trained both Susan and Jean, and I think bingo is in good hands and will continue um, to offer bingo, and that's every Monday at 7.30. In November, we're going to have the interfaith service. Uh, we will have our rabbi, Barnabas, and Father Roberts here. And we um, hope that you'll attend. It's a way that we can, um, can express our faith collectively and to um, give thanks for all the blessings we do truly enjoy. Window cleaning. So um, pending weather conditions, we will be w cleaning the outside of the windows beginning October 28th, and that will include independent living as well as Willowbrook Court and Oak Bridge Terrace. Always the question, what is our occupancy? Currently, we're 87.34%, uh, but when you add committed and selected apartments to that number were 93% occupied, committed, and selected. I'd like to um, in introduce Josie Ann, who is going to share some information related to home health. Good morning, everyone. Um, I just wanted to invite everyone to next month's uh, National Home Health, Home Services, Palliative Care Hospice Month celebration. Um, we're basically going to do like a give back for supporting home health and home services by um, requesting our services to assist you. Uh, we'll be having some fall themed treats such as like pumpkin bread, warm apple cider, just a chance to meet you if we haven't already met you and introduce ourselves also. Um, we'll be at the winery November 14th, 12 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. Hope to see you there. Thank you, Josiane. And um, just to remind everyone, AXE has AXE Home Health, which is the Medicare services, and we can provide in your home um, nursing as well as therapy under Medicare Part A um, benefits. And then there's Axe Home Services, which is our private duty aid program. And um, just to, to remind everyone that all the revenues tied to Axe Home Health and Home Services actually helps to offset monthly fee increases. So when Axe Home Health and Home Services provides the services, know that the revenues derived helps to maintain or reduce um, monthly service fee increases. So the money doesn't go into another um, uh, income statement. It literally stays within the obligated group and offsets monthly service fees. So that's another benefit in using Axe Home Health or Home Services. Today, from 2 to 3, I believe, we have the K-4 app. If you have some issues or you want to learn how to use the K4 app, I believe DeAndre is helping with that from 2 to 3 in the bistro. Is that correct? Winery. Thank you. In the winery. So if you want to learn how to use the K4 app or you don't have it on your phone, go downstairs. He'll get you connected. It's super easy and he'll show you how to use it. At this time, I'd like to open the meeting up to any other topics, questions, or suggestions. Don't be shy. <laughs> 
Okay, well, no, no questions, suggestions, or uh, other topics. I'd like to thank you for coming today and um, hope you have a nice uh, week ahead. I guess we're on Thursday, so we're almost to the weekend. Uh, but enjoy your day, and thanks for being here.